Hello YouTube. Today we will be discussing something called pulsed width modulation. Um, what I tend to use it for is as a voltage control for usually like my microcontrollers. Um, I may do a demonstration later on with the BeagleBone, but for now let's just discuss exactly what it is. So pulsed width modulation. What it does is it puts out a signal. In this case we're going to use logical 1, but it doesn't have to be 1 volt. It could be, for example, like on the BeagleBone, it could be 3.3 volts. So basically, it goes, it pulses, which is where the pulse comes from. It goes up to logical one, down to zero for it's high for a certain amount of time, then it comes down for a certain amount of time, and it does that repetitively, unless otherwise noted. But that's pretty much what it is. That's that's what pulse width modulation is. So some things you need to understand about um, in order to really analyze what it is and how to use it, you would need to know its period, how long it's on, and how long it's off. That's pretty much it. You can then calculate a bunch of things. So let's start with the period. So the period is how long one section is before it repeats. So in this case, we don't have a period because we didn't define the time, but it's on for a certain amount of time and it's off for a certain amount of time. That is one period. So And then it just repeats over and over and over. So let's, uh, this, this in the green is how long it's on and what's not highlighted is off. So given that, let's discuss something called duty cycle. Now, the duty cycle is the percentage of on and off time. It's, it's usually given in a percentage. Um, I haven't really seen it given in any other way, but... Let's just discuss it as a percentage. So you should know the amount of time that it's on and the amount of time that it's off. And when you discuss uh, pulse width modulation, usually this is given in the period because it's a lot easier to calculate that way. So let's go ahead and give an example problem. Okay. So I'm going to define the lengths of time. So. I'm going to start with this one right here. So this one, let's say it is, let's give it eight microseconds. And then we'll give this one two microseconds. So the period is the total time it takes before it starts repeating. So in other words, one period. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the math. This is really easy. You can just, if it's the sum of the high and the low. So this was eight microseconds. And the other one is two microseconds. Now, what this is equal to is quite obviously 10 microseconds right so that is one period one period is 10 microseconds now let's discuss the duty cycle of this signal so let's figure this out the total time it's going to take is 10 microseconds the total so let's start with 2 microseconds so we can see what percentage of the time it is on. Usually you go by the on percentage. So this makes it a little easier so you can tell. But let's say you were working with another system that used a PNP transistor. You would actually be using the negative side rather than the positive side. So it really depends on your setup. But let's kind of keep it to what we're planning on using it for. So we'll calculate the one with 2 microseconds. So we have the total time of 10 microseconds. So we'll put it into a fraction. We have 10 microseconds on the bottom. By the way, this is the period, so we'll mark it as P. So 10 microseconds, and then, and then we'll mark the 2 microseconds for the on time. So you could probably see the microseconds cancel. You're left with 2 over 10. And this is equal to 1 fifth. Now this is the 
the ratio, but you got to make it into a percentage. So this is the duty ratio, if you will. Now we'll make it into a percentage quite easily by multiplying by 100. This comes into a duty cycle, which is one fifth times 100 is equal to 20. And that's a percentage. So the duty cycle is the ratio of these two multiplied by 100. A ratio of the total to the on time, I'm sorry. So the duty cycle is a ratio of the on time versus the total time. That would be your duty cycle in this case. So in this case, if we had 8 microseconds off and 2 microseconds on, our period would be 10 microseconds because that's the total span of this little wave right here before it starts repeating. And it has a duty cycle of 20% because it's on for 2 seconds out of the entire 10 seconds that it, that it runs. So that is a 20% duty cycle because you have 2 over 10, the microseconds cancel. You have 1 fifth at the end and you multiply that by 100 which gives you the 20%. So that's easy enough. What does this mean? Well, if you know the duty cycle as a percentage, you could multiply that by the voltage. So now let's solve for voltage. So as you can see, you have one second, uh, I mean one volt and zero volts. So you have one volt for two microseconds and no voltage right here for eight microseconds. So you could calculate this through the percentage of the duty cycle. Now this is only true at higher frequencies and really it would depend on the device. But like I said, it's more true to at higher frequencies. So to solve for the voltage, it would be easy enough in this case. So the voltage of this PWM signal at a high enough frequency would be the, per the percentage multiplied by the voltage, the peak voltage. So 20% of 1 volt, quite obviously, 0.2 of a volt. So if you had a higher on time, and uh, I mean more on time and less off time, this number would go increasing until you hit 1 volt. Now, normally what I do with this is I connect this to a transistor. Obviously if the transistor can handle it, but most transistors can run in the range of the megahertz, so you have quite a bit to work with. So you have that to work with. So this is a pretty slow PWM signal, uh, 2 microseconds. Some of them are in the nanoseconds, but it's decent, I guess. So let's review. So the period is the length of the on and off time right here before it starts repeating. So in this case, it was 2 microseconds of on time and 8 microseconds of off time. And that gives you a total time of 10 microseconds. And that's your period. As you can see right here, we mark this as period. Now, to solve for the duty cycle, you have the ratio of the on time to the total time. So the on time was 2 microseconds, and the total time is a period of 10 microseconds. So 2 over 10 is 1 fifth, and if you make that into a percentage, you have 20%. So your duty cycle would be 20% in this case. Now, if we want to find for the voltage, you find the voltage that your peak is going to be at. In this case, our peak was at 1 volt of the PWM signal. And we multiply that by 20%. So 20% of 1 volt is 2 volt, 0.2 volts. And that's our voltage. Now, this is very common in microcontrollers, and it's a good way to make an analog signal. In fact, a lot of amplifiers use this concept to make their music. They use PWM to increase the voltage and decrease it all digitally. And they use this in other systems such as communication and power, I believe. But you can go ahead and look that up in Wikipedia if you want. It give you a pretty good description, but hopefully this gives you a good idea, a good basis to continue your learning of pulsed width modulation signals. All right, well, I hope you like this video. 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you get the chance and leave your comments in the comment section if you have any questions. So I'll see you guys in the next video.